previously I explained how the engine this uh, 195.6 uh, American Motors engine using a Rambler American I previously explained how when I opened it up the uh, connecting rods were from another engine from a 232 or a 3.8 liter uh, AMC engine and the way I found that out is from the connecting rod number and looking at the design um, and the other thing that I also explained is how late, later model pistons they had wider uh, distance between the shoulders so that they could accommodate uh, wider connecting rods which is the case for the 232 so this engine actually had connecting rods from another engine used on late model pistons that's why uh, the earlier model pistons that I have unfortunately they're too narrow at the top so I cannot use them but since I only have a full set of these bearings I have a full I have three full sets of connecting rods however one of them is from different it's a different assortment of connecting rods I actually have like two number threes, two number ones, uh, like cap and connecting rod. Apparently, you can't uh, you can't really do that. That's not really a good idea. Appar the uh, the connecting rods they're actually honed uh, before they put they're put into the engine. So you should really just get them as a set, like a complete set with matching connecting rods and connecting rod caps. And so I was thinking of either using using the uh, connecting rods from the flathead engine, but I would have to go through the trouble of removing all the uh, pistons because they're different from the overhead valve, which is this engine here. Or I'd somehow have to make narrower pistons fit these connecting rods. So uh, once again, basically what I have, these ones here match. You have a connecting rod, a number four connecting rod with a number four connecting rod cap, a number five rod with a five cap, one rod with a one cap from the same engine, same set. And there's also the thing with the weights. They're all supposed to be uh, somewhat balanced. Uh, I know some people go through the trouble balancing an original engine, but I think that's it. Doesn't it's not reasonable. At least uh, what it seems it doesn't seem that it's reasonable either. That would have already been done on the factory, or it would be a negligible difference. Um, this engine is not, it's a high torque engine, it's not a high RPMs engine, right? So there's a whole difference there. And, uh, we could go into a whole video about that, but I'll leave that for some other time. But basically, it's a heavy duty engine not the fast duty engine sort of thing uh, which which I love by the way but um, the idea is with different rods and what will happen is what you can try is if you do for some reason have let's say you just break one connecting rod with these engines it's highly unlikely that you're going to be able to find uh, at least reasonably price a full set of connecting rods if you do it's really expensive and then you also have to match them to the caps which is not it's not easy it's not easy that's why I, I always advise people to stay away from incomplete engines you get an engine just make sure it's all there at least the main parts are usable right so that's that. So I actually uh, have a set. I have six pair of connecting rods from God knows which engines, and the numbering on them is different as well. So some of them have a really deep number marked on it. The other one's just really light that you can barely see it. And they did not come with the caps. Uh, just one cap actually so I got six connecting rod bearings and just one cap uh, I bought it from eBay uh, cost about $15 for all of them so that was quite a good find the only reason I got those is because my original plan was just to 
fix flat headed. So I was going to use one of those connecting rods to fix the bent rod, to replace it, rather, to replace the bent rod. So that, that's, that's what, uh, that was my idea. But I ended up getting a whole new engine, not a new engine, but a whole different engine. And uh, so what I could do is at this point there'd be two options. Either I, I uh, machine the connecting rods themselves and make the tops narrower, or I machine the pistons. Now the pistons are easier, much easier to find than connecting rods. It's highly unlikely you're going to find somebody selling connecting rods. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe six different ones like I said, but not full sets of connecting rods. That's not easy and if you do find it it's certainly going to be quite expensive so now pistons on the other hand although they're quite expensive they're still made so worst case scenario you could buy them from egg which is a uh, piston manufacturing company company in america and if you buy anything from them you'll have to sell your leg and uh possibly your kidney as well <laughs> to be able to buy something from there but it's there they don't have this kind of stuff so i rather leave this untouched i mean you could buy a whole engine for parts some people do that but it starts to become a lot of work now fortunately i have somebody that can help me with the machining otherwise it would be one of those things where it would make this project uh, not viable would be too high so but fortunately I have access to, to a, a machine shop and that's that's very 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 fortunate for me so what I'm what I'm gonna end up doing is machine the inside walls on the pistons themselves so that I can put in the connecting rods, the new connecting rods. and it's not a whole lot it's uh, maybe about five millimeters or 0.1 of an inch, something like that. It's not a whole lot, but it has to be done. I'm just noticing, noticing some scratch marks here on the crankshaft. I'll have to fix that. Uh, by the way, when you're putting in or removing connecting rods, put uh, make sure you get some rubber hose like a gas fuel line, we'll put it over the threads that will protect them from uh, denting or scratching the uh, uh, surfaces of the uh, crankshaft. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so I have the crankshaft in as you can see and I can freely turn it by hand very easily. very smoothly so I'm very happy and uh, so what I'd like to do is what I've done here is I just put a connecting rod here through the bottom not through the edge just a connecting rod it doesn't even have a piston on it and I put the bearing in the rod bearing and what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that it fits nicely and uh, There's no binding. As you can see. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. So it's turning nice and freely. And I'm also going to attempt to move it sideways. There's a bit of side movement supposed to have that's normal just a little bit side movement you can check the clearance with the fueler gauge and I'm gonna now more importantly move it up and down and there is no movement whatsoever Rod the other way. Once again, attempt to move it up and 
down. And there is no movement, as you can see. Somebody's killing a chainsaw or something. But it still turns freely, 100% freely and smoothly. And that's what matters. Ideally, you want to try this with all the connecting rods, or you don't actually have to put them on the crankshaft. Just put them on the crankshaft, maybe just to, uh, to, to test the size of your bearings. So that's sort of what I'm doing as well. So if I were to put the bearing that's too small, it would feel, feel loose. Perhaps a bearing that's too big, it would, uh, it would be too stiff. And uh, you, you're supposed to move it very freely. See, just its own weight, it, it'll move just with its own weight. So that's how it's supposed to be. Not too loose, not too tight, but no movement whatsoever in terms of up and down or sideways like that. In terms of like the, the parallel movement from the piston. Um, so that's that. And to check the rod bearings and caps, make sure they they match. You take it off. You take the rod bearing cap. You just assemble it off. Just off of the crankshaft and you just put your finger in and make sure there's no ridges on the uh, mating surfaces so if you care to watch i'll just do that real quick hello hello and you get an echo from the uh, block by the way i'm always whenever i'm not working on the engine I'm, i have it covered because you get dust you see i'm working outside here so uh, you could get possibly get dust and uh, that would wear out the engine. So you also don't want tree seeds and garbage getting into the engine like that. So. I do. Let's say I didn't have this uh, full engine uh, connecting rod set from the uh, 232 engine. Let's say I just had that uh, broken set. Um, what you can do is the same thing that I just explained. Take the connecting rod and the cap off and then you see which one matches the best. Hopefully you get one that matches. If it doesn't match perfectly, Also do which is probably the easiest way is to use different bearing caps on each side so if one side is bigger and one, the other side is smaller you put a bigger bear on the smaller side a smaller bear on the bigger side uh, to make it compensate for the size difference as long as at the end they're exactly the same that's what matters so basically what you do you just do this here up so I put my finger inside and I can't feel it if I have my eyes closed I can't find the seam I can't find where the bearings match join together so that's exactly what we want same for the side surfaces here sorry I wasn't showing you there's no ridge whatsoever here or here neither one of the surfaces now like I said unfortunately I don't know why the factory has different variations of these bearings and connecting rods, connecting rod caps. It's really unfortunate, but that's the way things are. So although you can get a rod forging number, exactly the same number, uh, they'll still be slightly different, which is really unfortunate. But as you can see here, as long as you put your hand inside, your finger inside, and everything's perfectly round, you can't feel the ridge, you can't feel the seam, not between the bearings, not between the sides of the caps, the connecting rods, not the outer side, and uh, that's what matters, that's fine. Now, with the diff small differences that I just mentioned in mine, that's probably what I think that these other numbers mean, the other numbers on the other side. So, on one side you have the long number, it's uh, 
seven digit number and that's the forging number so this is how you find your, your, your connecting rods type this number in on eBay with the internet and you try to find it but it has uh, to the left of it you have a single small number I don't know what that means but I think it has to do with the weight of the connecting rod or perhaps the small differences and on the other side you flip it over on the other side there's a three digit number in this case with the AM logo there's also a little wall here I don't know if you can see it or not so that's what I suspect that is unfortunately in my case we'll just have to machine the pistons once again, you could machine the connecting rods, but I rather machine the pistons. Or you could just buy a full set, brand new pistons. That'll fit this connecting rod. That's going to cost me over $500, so that's out of the question. 